Tom Tolles is the editorial cartoonist for the Washington Post. He is a man who needs no introduction, deserves none, and isn't going to get one. <laughs> I didn't write that. He did. Okay. <laughs> Tom Tolles. Well, see, now you've already given one away. Now, this is... <laughs> um, Matt asked me to, to talk, and I said... Matt, I don't have anything to say. And he said, well, I'd like you to say it anyway. And I, because it was Matt, that's the only reason I'm here. I love Matt. I really don't have a lot to say. He said, well, I need a title for your talk. I said, well, I don't have anything to say, so I don't actually have a title. <laughs> he said, well, it doesn't matter. Just give me a title. And I thought, well, okay, what would be a good title? And so I thought five, the five secrets of editorial cartooning sounded like a great topic. And, <laughs> and so I gave him that title. And then I had like a month to actually figure out what those might be. <laughs> and I did. I wrote them down. I, uh, I have them in here. You know, <laughs> the envelope everybody has always wanted to see. But then I thought, no, that's not actually, that's not, I shouldn't have said that as a title. The better title would have been, because it's a more, it's, a, it's, it's got an angle. I should have said, uh, it's gonna, I'm going to talk about the five myths of editorial cartooning, because that's like this journalistic format now that, oh, you have the myths, and then you explain what the reality is. So um, I, wrote, I wrote the five myths of editorial cartooning. And I have those in th this envelope. <laughs> now, you might, those, the clever ones in the crowd, might have figured out it's the same envelope <laughs> and it's the same five things. OK, now, who can guess what number one is? You know, I'm really sick of hearing this, because this is what everybody is always telling me. I mean, everybody from the beginning has, you know, especially people that don't like my cartoons. They think, oh, well, you know, if I can't, if I'll tell them that the cartoons suck, but on top of that, you can't even draw. They just, oh my God, I bet that wounds him. I bet that's going to make him feel bad about himself as a person. And sort of it does, but... <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm underprepared. No, I actually have, I have this all figured out. <laughs> oh, I, it, my note, it says on purpose. Yes, I draw that way on purpose. And I do. You know, I mean, I, I do. And it's, you know, sometimes they, I don't like to speak in front of groups. You can see why. I don't like to, you know, sometimes people say, well, we'd like to do an exhibit of your cartoons. I don't like to do that either. And here's why. I have a specific reason for that. I've done it. They frame them. They put them up in a museum. I go and look at them, and I, you know, what mostly I think is, Jesus, I should learn how to draw. <laughs> but there's a reason that they don't look good in a museum, is because I don't draw them to be in a museum. I draw them to be in the newspaper. And I didn't bring any of them today, by the way. Sorry. If you want to read my cartoons, buy a fucking newspaper. <laughs> And I used the F word, I didn't use the C word, by five copies <laughs> of the newspaper. Um, all right, well, so it's, it's true, you, you need to learn how to draw, but you need, the way I learn, the way, the way I'm, what I'm trying to do when I draw is to communicate. That's what, it, it's not drawn to hang on a wall. I mean, some editorial cartoonists, are just 
brilliant artists, beautiful things to look at, and that's great. I'm not one of those, but I draw the way I draw because I want the, what it looks like to work for what I'm trying to say. And it's, I can't explain why the way I draw works for what I want it to say, but I look at it, I work at it, it's on purpose. Um, there's probably a clicker here. All right, number two, secret number two. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. Everybody likes cartoonists to be funny, you know, and funny's good. I'm good with funny. Funny works. I mean, this whole debate is actually mostly over. It was like this raging thing when McNally came in because he was genuinely, he just was funny. And then the, as Jack talked about, the, oh, speaking of Jack, you know, there's a, a legacy. Or everything is changing in cartooning, but there's still a legacy. Jack put up a, a slide of what, he, what his hair looked like in 1973. Well, the legacy of that is I now have the hair that he wore <laughs> in 1973. And I bring that up because I am actually not all that interested in what I have to say here. But I shouldn't have said it because now even the few things I have to say, you're not going to be listening to me anymore. You're going to be looking at my hair. And you're going to be thinking, yeah, he's right. That's really weird hair. Why, what's with that hair? Why does he, why does he look like that? But, but that would be wrong for you to be th doing that. That would be shallow and wrong. So don't do that. Um, oh, funny. Okay. Well, there's four different kinds of funny, I, I, I think. I, th I think. I thought of them uh, between when I got off the metro and here. Um, and it doesn't matter. But, you know, everybody likes to sub... This is, there's witty. Witty is like... Witty is... I'd, there's witty people. There's witty writing. There's witty characters. Witty, I would define witty as humor without the laughing part. I mean, it's smart, it's clever, but it, it sort of tends to be riffy and fundamentally kind of empty. Not always, but often. So I, I, I don't like to, that's not my favorite kind. Then there's like regular humor, but that comes in two kinds. There's attack humor, which is mostly what political cartooning is about, and then there's reassurance humor, which fortunately you don't see too much of in editorial cartoons. The, the attack humor is actually trying to get you to laugh and think, but laugh. And reassurance humor is trying to get you to say, aww, well, that's good. We're good. We're all good. You know, and it's amusing that we're all good, it's nice, it's reassuring. And then the fourth kind of humor is just bad humor. That's the humor that's supposed to be funny, but actually just as awful. All right, that's all I got to say. Oh, I guess I could say this. I mean, the McNally, that's right, before I started talking about my hair, which you're not supposed to think about, and you're not even supposed to look at it, <laughs> is that the, the big argument was, well, what should a cartoon be funny, or should it make a point? Well, obviously, it should do both. And then you could say, well, what about a, a cartoon that doesn't make a point and it's funny? Is that, like, is that a good thing? Well, it's not a great editorial cartoon. But on the other hand, there are editorial cartoons that don't make a point and aren't funny either. <laughs> and that's worse. So funny, funny we're going we're gonna to say with qualifications. That's a good thing. All right, number three, what would that be? Be fair. What does that mean? But, you know, it's like always people are saying, well, you're not being fair. You're not being fair to the, you're only, like, you're only doing cartoons on one side. And, you know, I don't know, this is like, this is something I think about. I guess that's what I'm here to, to say. 
I don't like I, I don't expect to like inform you. I mean, I, everything I do, this is the way I look at it. Everything I do is right there in the paper. That's you know, trying to explain what I'm doing is is beside the point. It's like it's like explaining a magic trick. Do you really want to know? Yeah, it's interesting, and then oh, then the trick isn't interesting anymore. But anyway, I'm going to try to tell you how I wrestle with this stuff because I do. Being fair is one of them. Um, you know, to me, uh, you know, I do cartoon from what people would say. Oh, he's on the left, but no, I'm exactly right here in the middle. The, the rest of you are arrayed around me. <laughs> And that's really true. I don't like say, oh, well, here's the spectrum. Which, which unbalanced way do I want to go? No, I look at what's going on. I look what people are saying. I look what their, their arguments are. And I look at what their sense of what is justice. And I listen and look at all of that. And I say, OK, this is what I think, this is what I think are the good, better arguments. This is where my sense of justice is. I, like a two-year-old, am the center of the universe. And, you know, if there's only one person over here and everybody in the world is over, it doesn't matter. I'm still the center. And so what I do is I tell you what I think. And what I think is what I draw. And that's fair. It's not like even, but that's a different thing. That's all. All right, let's see. Oh, now, guilty. This is one that the, the, the daily editorial cartoon job is designed to create this hole into which I and almost every other cartoonist falls on a regular basis. Because the nature of the job is you're supposed to be drawing cartoons on stuff that's in the newspaper. Well, there's a lot of stuff in the newspaper. And to do a good cartoon, you have to understand the subject. Well, OK, how hard is it to understand a subject? Really hard. How hard is it to understand every subject in the paper? Harder. <laughs> and then. Oh, well, you're supposed, to un you're supposed to know everything, and you're supposed to know everything about this particular thing, and then you have to, like, see what just happened and put the, the context of wisdom of all time on that right then for tomorrow, but don't ever be wrong, ever. Well, guilty. But I do try. I will say this was a smart. My first editor who actually talked me into political cartooning, he said, it's not funny, and it's, but it's smart. He said that there's two levels of understanding a subject, only two. He said there's understanding it, and there's not understanding it. <laughs> and if you don't really understand it, then you're guessing. And he said, and this is true, he said that if you read enough on something, eventually you can get to the point where it's like, I know the subject. And he said, once you've gotten to that point, it's like you've, you've hit a, a, a vein of ore in a mine, and you can dig and dig and dig, and it's inexhaustible. You, are always, you always know what you're talking about. Well, great, except how the hell do you do that? It's hard. It's like really hard. Once or twice, I felt, I felt like I've read enough about a subject that I genuinely got it. And it is, he's right. You can mine that. And the rest of the time, you're just like trying your best. And sometimes you're being stupid. All right, there's only one more. Yikes, I'm out of time. Um, I have like, yes, I'm going to take it. You can like, they, when they carry me away, then I'm done. <laughs> I 
this is pretty much the crux of it. I could have left all the other ones out. I mean, it's a little bit ironic now. I mean, tragically ironic in that 